St. Louis is famous for its giant arch. It symbolises the fact that this city was the gateway to the West from East America back in the 1800s. But in scientific circles these days, St. Louis is famous for being one of the world's centres for genetically modified food. This is the home of Monsanto, the biggest GM and conventional seed supplier in the world. They've genetically engineered grains like canola and soy to be tolerant to their proprietary herbicide, Roundup. The sale of a seed and chemical package to farmers with the attendant costs is really the way that Monsanto has run its business. There's been plenty of outcry over Roundup Ready crops. But now there's a new direction in GM, enhancing nutrition. Monsanto's genetically engineered soybeans to make a healthier oil. This is the standard vegetable oil you buy at the supermarket. Now would you, rather than put this on your salad, go with this product? It's a soy oil. Now with a conventional oil, it has about 10% of those heart healthy omega-3 fatty acids in it. This product has 25% and the omega-3 is in a much healthier form. The healthy omega-3s that we get come from fish, and they actually get it from algae, because they eat the algae. Vegetables like soybeans and, and canola also make omega-3s, but they don't have the same health benefit as what we get from fish. Fish oil is particularly good for heart health. It helps prevent the arrhythmia in the ventricle part of the heart, and that's what kills you from a heart attack. It's not the plugged artery, it's the arrhythmia. The genes to make omega-3 were from surprising sources. The genes actually come from a mushroom and a petunia. Because everything we do in GM, we learn how nature does it, and then we take it into the plant that we want to grow and consume. The algae genes didn't work as well in soybean, but we found that the mushroom and petunia versions did. So, so that's where we went for our gene sources. But of course, the people who could really benefit from more nutritious food live in the third world. One of the staple crops in Africa is cassava. It came into Africa with the Portuguese traders 500 years ago, and it displaced every other staple crop. It displaced yam, it displaced everything. And today, if you look at cassava's production figures in Africa, it's just, it's going like that. It's almost vertical. Cassava is one of the few crops that grows well in drought conditions and in poor soil. And it can handle Africa's fluctuating markets. You can keep cassava in the ground for two years and not harvest it and go back and harvest it when the market is right. So this is one crop that it's almost a miracle crop. But it's no miracle when it comes to nutrition. This is an excellent source of calories, full of starch, but the, the roots here are devoid of, of protein, almost no protein whatsoever in here. There's no uh, vitamin A, very little vitamin E, no iron or zinc. So it means if you rely on this crop as your staple foods, you will suffer from malnutrition. So, at St. Louis's Danforth Center, researchers are genetically modifying cassava. They're inserting genes to increase protein, vitamin A, and iron. So that if you eat cassava for your breakfast, then you'll be receiving all of these nutrients that you require for the whole day in one meal. After the new genes are inserted, the plants are grown in some very sophisticated greenhouses. They have incredible control over the conditions inside these greenhouses. In fact, they can recreate virtually any environment on Earth. For example, you can make a nice balmy 30 degrees Celsius with almost 100% humidity. Or you can turn the dial right down and create very low humidity in the room and say just 4 degrees Celsius. For GM cassava, the conditions in sub-Saharan Africa are dialed in. Success here could have an enormous impact on the third world. This really isn't all about just making a couple of new lines. This is about improving the nutritional value of a crop forever worldwide so that it's always going to have a better nutrient content and a person eating it is always going to have the benefits of that regardless of where they are or when they're eating it. In Nigeria, for example, you save 39,000 children from dying, you know, every year from pro-vitamin A deficiency. But there's no need to head down the GM route, even in Africa, according to critics. Well, the Food and Agriculture Organization reports that there's enough food currently produced in the world to feed 12 billion people. And we have 
a population of six billion so we could feed everyone well twice. Such debate doesn't impress Martin. If you have never been hungry, then you can get involved in all those debates. But if you have really been hungry, it's not an argument. You know, it's, it's so clear, it's so obvious. The GM cassava will leave the lab for test fields in about four years. And if all works out, it'll be available to farmers a couple of years after that.